kids, this is my vlog for January the 4th, 2014, and welcome to the new year. I hope you had as much fun as I did ringing in the new year. Um, I did my my regular routine and my ritual, and it was enjoyable, and I um, had a great time. Now, I want to first of all thank so many people for reaching out um, to me recently. Not only people that I've known for a long time, the people that I have just met um, recently, um, reaching out in such support. Um, when I did my last video and a couple of posts, I pretty much opened up into all the different conditions that exist that make up me. Um, I didn't go into every graphic detail, but essentially I gave all the major ones, and I was amazed at the support. Um, I've been you know, giving them out on a personal level when I meet people one by one. And I said, you know, depending on the reaction um, I get, I can either continue talking or I'd be quiet. Um, but I've learned to just let it out. And it was so freeing for me to just put it out there finally for everyone and then let them make their own decision on how they want to deal with me or if they want to deal with me. Um, and that brought me to uh, another point that I wanted to bring up. Um, special memories. We have special memories that are good and bad. I know I have lots of them. And there are things that I will remember about places and events and everything that I'll never forget. And some people actually make those things special. For example, if you're a Facebook friend of mine right now, you know that there's a big sun in my background, um, you know, on my page. And that same big sun, which is the national airline symbol for, from the 1970s, is called the Sun King, is also tattooed on my right leg. And it has um, a saying, La Luz de Mi Vida, and it has some, some, some people's initials that I care deeply about. And um, that sun, though, became important to me long before I had it tattooed on my leg. It became important to me because it always reminded me of my grandmother Margaret, and it always re and it also reminded me of a great flight I had because I got to take National Airlines and it was by far my favorite airline ever. And I just fell in love with that logo. Um, when it, from the first time I ever saw it, it spoke to me, and it just seemed friendly and serious and inviting and. All different kinds of things. So it brings up all these different emotions in me. And it's very important to me. But first and foremost, it reminds me of my grandmother, Margaret. And it always forever will. Now, um, you go into less serious things. For example, um, a couple of years ago, um, I went to a charity event. And um, I was lucky enough to... Um, I was with my friend Misty Eyes. And I was lucky enough to be sitting next to Pandora Box came in. Um, dressed as Michael, as his alter ego, and um, sat down and was trying to enjoy a brunch. We were getting harassed by this drag queen. And I had put out all these dollar bills on the on the table, and Pandora finally got tired of it and shoved this this cube of cheesecake in this drag queen's mouth so she could no longer do her number, and had the whole room laughing so hard. I mean, it hurt. And forever when I look at Cheesecake, the first thing I think of is Pandora Box. And I will always think of Pandora Box when it comes to Cheesecake. Um, for example, recently, uh, on my this cruise I just went on, on this drag queen cruise, um, I sat with a great group of guys. And um, there was, it became because I had to have a special dessert made for me every night because I was diabetic and didn't do sugar. So they always brought me fruit cheese, um, and sometimes some nuts and, and some crackers. And essentially, that was my dessert, basically fruit and cheese. And every night but one, they always put two slices of pineapple on my fruit plate. And from the first night that I that we started this, this trip until the very last night, um, I cut up my first piece of pineapple and the conversation had gotten around to pineapple somehow on the first day when we were introducing each other and talking about where we lived and, every, and the foods that we like and stuff like that. And Toronto Harris um, happened to mention he liked pineapple. So 
when I was cutting, I pre-cut up everything so that I don't have to, you know, keep cutting. I just cut everything up in advance, and I have little chunks, and I can mix and match. So I took a piece of pineapple on my fork, and I handed it over to Toronto, and I said, um, would you like some pineapple? And he like, look, he looked at me kind of funny because he didn't know me yet. I said, but if you do, I said, make sure you take it off my fork sensually. So he, he, he bought into it and he took it off my fork as sensually as possible. It was just almost, it was almost, it was almost pornographic. And every night for the whole rest of the cruise, I would cut up my fruit and the first thing I would do is hand Toronto a piece of a pineapple. Now one night I didn't get pineapple. And so I had to hunt somebody down and ask for it, and I wouldn't eat my dessert <laughs> until I got a piece of pineapple. <laughs> and then they ended up bringing me four pieces of pineapple, which was way too much. But um, Forever Pineapple will always be something I remember with Toronto Harris and on that cruise. Um, if you think of things like, there's also negative things you think of. For example, um, one time my mother went and bought some lamb at the supermarket when we were kids. And she brought it home, and it was bad. It was spoiled. It was gross. And um, she cooked it, and it smelled the whole house up. It was nasty. It was vulgar. And I used to eat lamb. Um, and I said to my mother, I said, there's something wrong with this. I won't eat it. It's gross. Look, it's like bubbling, like this disgusting pus and all this kind of stuff. Ew, ew, don't serve that. Don't serve that. Don't serve that. Well. My mother insisted I was nuts and crazy and told me to shut up and she knew what she was doing and, and it would be just fine. And when she put it down on the plate, it still stunk. The whole house still stunk and the food still stunk even though it was cooked and it was on the plate. And I said, I don't want to eat this. And my mother said, you'll eat it, you'll eat it. So I cut a piece and I tried to stick it in my mouth and the minute I did, I hurled right at the table. And I pushed myself away and I said, I refuse to eat this. You're not going to poison me. And I couldn't wash my mouth out with Listerine fast enough to get just get this awful taste out of my mouth. So finally, my father, you know, my father took a bite and he says, there's something wrong with this lamb. And so sure enough, my mother packed up the pieces of lamb and went down to the supermarket. And lo and behold, there was 30 other women that bought lamb that day, and they were all down there pissed because the supermarket had ruined everybody's dinner. And um, I was right. And so, but that horrible memory of that smell of that lamb um, forever makes me not want to eat lamb ever again. Like, I can't stand the smell of lamb, even if it's cooked properly and it's perfectly good lamb. Um, I'm not going near it. I'll, I'll, I'll do without. Thank you very much. So. <laughs> Um, I just wonder if every, if anybody else has these like memories that just sear into their mind um, in both good and bad ways um, about a life events or if you attach um, certain life events to certain things like for example Toronto and the pineapple or Pandora and the cheesecake um, you know whatever it is my grandmother and that logo um, I have so many of these 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 things attached um, to certain smells. For example, the smell of mothballs um, reminds me of my other grandmother, Louise, because she had mothballs in every drawer of her house, and her whole house always smelled like mothballs. And whenever you spent the night, the blankets smelled like mothballs, and it was a very soothing, comforting smell for me because I really loved her. I liked her. I felt safe with her. Um, I loved my grandmother's. So um, mothballs to me is always a very comforting smell. Camphor is very comforting for me. Um, so that was what I wanted to share today. Um, I'm looking forward to 2014. I have no idea what it's going to bring. Um, my crystal ball is all fuzzy. Um, I do know that I will have a moment of clarity, and this is important. Uh, for me, because I have not had one in a very long time. Um, I want to have a complete moment of clarity like it used to be, um, and I'm, that's my goal for 2014. And when I usually set a goal, um, I usually get to it, and I put it in my bucket list as having a moment of clarity. 
And um, so I'm looking forward to that moment whenever that moment occurs, but it will occur sometime in the next 300 and something days. And I'm certain I'll be sharing it with you. So um, I hope you're enjoying 2014 so far. If you have any um, thing you'd like to share, please feel free to type it out, write it out, give me a call. Just don't text. I don't text. I've learned not to text. Um, my phone's not text friendly, and I don't like using the little thing, and I'm always forever having to erase and go back, and I don't text. So call me, write me on Facebook, um, write me on YouTube, something, but don't text. Please, you're writing a letter. Um, the post office eventually gets it here. So, have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.